and what's up? First Star National STEAM Academy. I'm super excited to talk to you all about artificial intelligence, my STEM journey, my STEAM journey, and how you all can empower yourselves using STEM, using AI, and uh, just kind of trying to be savvy and hustle. So I'm gonna get started here with my presentation. Let's see. All right, so you all should be able to see my screen here. And again, my name is Justin Schaefer, but I go by Mr. Fascinate as well. I speak all over the world and I do quite a few different things. I'm gonna share you a little bit about my journey with you all here. So let's check out this link and you all should, oh, let me stop sharing so we can see the video uh, correctly. So I'll share sound and video uh, optimization. All right, so we all should be able to see this. Okay. Four years ago, I started on this path to trying to get young people excited about STEM. And my whole life has been an adventure. We are definitely on another planet right now. I just had one of the most mind blowing experiences of my life. Same time. Justin Schaefer here. My name is Justin Schaefer. My name is Justin Schaefer, also known as Mr. Fascinate. I want to create for STEM what ESPN is for sports. I grew up on the south side of Chicago in a single so parent a household cool and I felt like I didn't have yeah, access to STEM careers things. and I want to be um, the mentor the that world, I never had. And I'm going to share with you all a lot more uh, about this journey as well. So we're just going to go ahead and get started here. Push your head back. Well, this is the coolest thing I've done in a long, long time. I've traveled all, all right. over the world. I've reached over 100. This host real and back into the presentation. So y'all should be able to see it full screen again. So I'm here to talk to you all about STEM power, how you can use STEM to empower yourselves, your communities, and all the above. So one of the first things I wanna to talk to you about is how STEM has been able to change my life. You know, the work I've done with tech and AI has taken me to places like Dubai, which is a beautiful city. It's almost like the, um, I guess, the Middle Eastern interpretation of Las Vegas is a really cool place to be. It's taken me to the Bahamas, and yes, those are real ads. Those aren't Photoshop. Got to do some really cool STEM work out there and get a cool tan as well. We got to do some work out in Australia, uh, where every species on in Australia is more venomous and poisonous than a lot of their counterparts in other parts of the world. And these are things that I never thought I would be able to do, but it's all been made possible because of STEM tech and AI work. And I've gotten to do a TV show on Twitch where I hosted and, and talked about a space and escaping from different space scenarios where of course tech is a huge part of that. I got to drive Teslas, which we should all know that they're a huge part of artificial intelligence and machine learning. They're fully self-driving vehicles now and they're gonna even be more self-driving as the future unfolds with Tesla. Uh, one of the other cool things I've been able to do, I rode on a moon rover and this was actually from the movie Ad Astra featuring Brad Pitt and we got to go behind the scenes with Fox and learn how all that stuff works. And I've gotten to host science TV shows of my own. That's me wearing a space suit there on the left-hand side. And I actually was in what's called Biosphere 2 in Arizona, where I looked at different artificial habitats that were created in the middle of the desert uh, in this big dome. It's a really cool place to be. But, you know, I think a lot of people look at the crazy journey I've had in STEM uh, and they, they see these stories and they don't think, man, this guy probably was like a really good student and had all these good grades and had all this stuff figured out. But what actually was the case is I was kind of the class clown. Actually, it's such a class clown that my Twitter name in high school was um, at what that booty do. So <laughs> I was completely not serious, uh, definitely not serious about social media. And I didn't take much serious at all. At the time, you know, my grades were bad in chemistry and, and other subjects that were pertaining to computer science because I looked around, I didn't really see a clear path to success in those kind of fields. You know, uh, I, where I grew up, I just didn't see anyone doing that kind of stuff. I thought it was cooler to be a rapper or a basketball player or something like that. And I didn't see like people making money or flashing around doing stuff like STEM, STEAM, or working in tech and AI. So you know, one of the questions I wanna answer for you all today is how I actually fell in love with STEM. And I think you're gonna learn a lot about tech and artificial intelligence and the community that's out there that is diverse and vibrant. 
And you're also gonna learn how you can use these tools yourself today to empower yourself and start learning things on your own. So one of the cool things to understand about where I'm from is I grew up on the south side of Chicago. Now, this is a really pretty picture of the south side of Chicago. Well, this is Chicago itself. It's not the south side, but it's a really pretty picture. And it doesn't really depict exactly where I grew up in, but I was raised by a single parent. And so I'm a black kid on the south side of Chicago, raised by a single parent, and I didn't feel like I had the same amount of resources as other kids. And I remember when I was growing up, I would see things like this ad, uh, this is a radio announcement that would come out and said, we have more black men in prison than we have in our colleges. And the first time I saw that, I was actually eight years old. And I remember asking my mom, I was like, mom, am I going to jail? And she would laugh and be like, no, son, that's absolutely ridiculous. But as I became a class clown and was acting up in class and getting in all kinds of fights in school and rebelling and all those kinds of things, she started to cry when she would see the same advertisement because she was like, my son, you know, it may not be set up for success just because of where he's from and just because I didn't give him all the resources that he, like the other kids had. And so I remember looking around at the other kids and being like, man, I'm never going to succeed like they can succeed because I don't really have the same opportunities, the same resources, the same parents in the household that they do. Um, and so one of the cool things that happened was I made a contractual agreement. So um, you know, my mom, she was not making a lot of money at the time. She was struggling to support me. She had me when she was pretty young, but you know, when I was 14 years old, she made me promise her that I was going to find a way to get to college. And, you know, at the time I, you know, thought I was about going to do something athletic. And I realized that because of what I look like and because of my unique interests, which I wasn't really talking about, I, I liked science and tech. I didn't really talk about science and tech because it wasn't that cool. And so I was interested in this stuff and I was like, let me try and you know get my grades up and apply for a science program at a school, right? And so you know it took a long time. I finally got my life together, probably towards my junior and senior year in high school, and my test scores were good enough to get a full ride. And the reason I got a full ride was because of support from my school, which was Hampton University. It's a historically black college in Virginia, but also scholarships from NASA and NOAA, which is kind of like NASA for the ocean and the National Science Foundation. And that's a dope thing, especially for young people like you all, that there are tons of scholarships. If you come from a diverse background of any kind, there are tons of scholarships out there for you, tons of opportunities for you to succeed, uh, especially if you get into a STEM field in college, or even if you don't choose to go to school or to, to university, you can still get support to go into all kinds of programs in STEM. So I get into a science degree, I'm doing all kinds of cool stuff. I'm doing laboratory research and presenting my stuff. And I do stuff like this. This is actually not me modeling, but I'm in the middle of the open ocean in Savannah, Georgia, doing what's called a dolphin survey. So I'm looking out and peering out in the open ocean and seeing how many dolphins pop up uh, in the middle of the ocean. And I was getting paid a lot more than my friends were getting paid to do their summer internships where they were maybe working at a grocery store or something like that. Whereas I was getting real experience. And if you're in STEM, if you choose STEM, a lot of the opportunities are paid. So you don't have to be a broke college student like a lot of my friends were because they chose different things. This is another cool opportunity I had while I was working at the White House in Washington, DC, almost called the National Climate Assessment. So we gathered all this data uh, and you know, AI actually helped us with that years ago. And we, uh, we surveyed you know, what's going on on our planet, how's our climate working? And I got to bowl in the White House and present that research in DC. And it was super cool. Uh, and again, these are not experiences I thought I would ever have growing up on the south side of Chicago. One of the other cool things that I did was I got to tour the Google office and a fellowship. And this is in Silicon Valley in California, right? And so I got to see how different things work behind the scenes. And this is something I never imagined as a, as a, as a high school student even, even and that was like four years before this, right? But these are the opportunities that can come your way if you choose STEM as a career path. But like I said, I majored in science, right? Environmental science. And so I didn't realize, I, you know, one of the cool things that you, you experience when you major in something is you get really intelligent about one particular subject uh, and, and, and whatever subject that is. And for me, I didn't realize that STEM and STEAM are so much bigger and broader and more massive than my one degree. And so once I graduated, I understood that, you know, the, the, the iceberg was much bigger beneath the surface, right? And so one of the things I really think I took in was that STEM is more than just a degree. 
it's a way of life. You know, like I remember going to science class and even some of the computer science classes and they would make you memorize these facts and you have to, you know, finish this quiz. And, you know, I thought that that stuff wasn't relevant to me because I'm trying to hustle. I'm trying to make stuff work out for my mom. I'm trying to put food on, on, my, on my mom's table so that she doesn't have to work as hard and worry about me. And, you know, why am I learning about all this STEM stuff? And, you know, I later realized that I could have been using STEM all along to empower myself to create my own solutions to my own problems. So one of the cool examples of that is this young guy, Kelvin Doe. Um, and so Kelvin, Kelvin Doe, this actually had a viral video that came out. He's a mentee of mine now. Uh, he had a viral video come out about seven or eight years ago. And he's from Sierra Leone. So Kelvin Doe uh, went to a program like one of the ones that you all are in, where you're taught how to use different skills and empowered to solve problems in your community. And so Kelvin, what he did was he thought that his community didn't have enough positive energy in Sierra Leone. And they actually experienced a, a lot of poverty and you know, there is a lot of negativity around the space that he lives in. So he decided to take scraps from his local garbage dump, build a generator, build a radio and start blasting music from his own radio station in Sierra Leone, called himself DJ Focus and had a viral video and attracted the attention of top tech institutions all over the world, ended up going to MIT to get a degree in engineering. So that's what I'm talking about, how he saw a problem and he used his STEM mentality to, to solve it. So one of the cool things we actually did in the Bahamas was we had a kid develop a, a 3D printing um, tool. So one of the kids that we were working with, he had a couch that was leaning a little bit to the right because one of the stools in it was missing. And so this kid actually 3D printed his own stool for his couch and it was able to sit upright. But now he didn't, st he didn't stop there. What he did next was he used that same tool, that same skill set, 3D printing, to build a prosthetic for his grandfather. So his grandfather could do therapy on his arm that was recently broken, right? So again, he's able to solve his own problems in his community. I know the cool thing we did in the Bahamas here, because Bahamas has so much available sunlight, but you know, a lot of times they import a lot of goods. They spend over a billion dollars as a country importing food into the Bahamas. And so you know, what we did was we helped them build um, aquaponics farms and sustainable systems to use the stuff that's out there and engineer solutions to their problems, grow their own food in their house so they don't have to spend as much money on food because when you import food, it gets really, really expensive. So I started thinking about this too. I'm like, okay, I got some problems I want to solve in my community. So I went and built a computer. That was one of the first things I did when I graduated from school. And I didn't do that, you know, um, I just, I didn't go to school for that. I went to school for marine science, but I knew from my STEM degree that I was confident that I could learn anything. You know, I could figure out how to solve any problem. And that's one of the things you get, no matter what STEM discipline you go into. So I taught myself how to build a computer on YouTube University, as I like to call it, where you can pretty much watch a how-to video on anything. I'm talking about anything. I worked with some, some middle school kids a couple of months ago and we found a YouTube video on how to build a nuclear reactor in seven minutes. Now, it might not be the best nuclear reactor in the world, but you can pretty much figure out how to do anything on YouTube today. And so I use the skills that I learned on YouTube, which is PC building and character animation and graphic design and tech skills, like building web pages and websites. And I created my own brand called Fascinate, where I created all these different characters to make STEM more culturally relevant because I felt like the young people like me that grew up didn't see this stuff as cool or fun or dope or relevant for the culture. So I was like, I'm gonna change that. So one of the first projects I did was create a cartoon series called Hood Science, where uh, basically all these different, um, you know, my, my character, Nate, he works with uh, the drone SciFly and I'll show you all a little bit more of that later, but he had like an artificial intelligence algorithm where he like the, the drone could talk on his own because he was programmed through AI. And so, you know, I'm teaching STEM concepts through the conversations that they're having on Hood Science. So it's kind of like, I don't know, South Park and, and a science show put together into one thing for the culture too, though. <laughs> so, and other, one of the other things I started doing, and again, purely self-taught here is I started putting together these different scrappy camera setups. I would maybe like take a smartphone and set up a tripod and put some lights. And, you know, this would cost me like, you know, maybe 10, $20. And I would make my setups look as professional as I possibly could. 
I kind of finessing, just, you know, working with, with the resources that I had. And so that positioned me to do all kinds of professional things. I was able to use that skill set to build my own studio in my apartment. And I'm producing all this video content about science and drones and, uh, you know, AI and, and things like that. And that basically gave me the opportunity to do even bigger stuff. And so one of the cool things we did, we worked with young people at Microsoft and Google and all these other places to teach them about STEM skills. And we talked to them about artificial intelligence. So we exposed them to what's called AI developer kits. Now that's an important terminology to, to think about. And this is basically a, a small computer that you can use to program different AI algorithms. So, you know, we would put these computers together. Um, and if you all have ever heard of a Raspberry Pi, it's kind of similar to that, but a little more beefy in terms of how powerful the computer is. And so we could run all kinds of cool algorithms uh, and programs like these. And these are some of the programs that uh, some other folks have, have built uh, from using developer kits. One of them is called real-time human pose estimation. So you could build basically an AI a yoga instructor or an artificial yoga instructor based on the way that someone's moving by tracking their movements using artificial intelligence. Another cool project that was developed, and this one was really important, especially during COVID, was to use mask cam. Uh, and so this actually tracked your face and tried to see if you're actually wearing a mask or not. So when a lot of people are jumping into crowded spaces and they're trying to make sure that they're you know safe and regulated, that you know, they're wearing their mask properly. And this, this camera can actually demonstrate that and even make a buzz alert sound to, if it notices that you're not wearing your mask and tell you directly to put your mask on uh, by identifying who you are. Uh, and another cool thing, and again, you know, for me, I see AI uh, and, and st STEM and STEAM in general as tools to empower. And so this is a really cool thing where uh, it's called AI for the blind or AI for the blind. And uh, basically it uses, uh, you know, it uses a camera in the place of a person's eye. And ideally, you know, it's most helpful when the person is visually impaired in some way. And, you know, it allows them to track the distance between different objects, right? And so it'll beep audibly if, you know, let's say you're walking too close to a wall uh, and you, know, you can't see the wall, but the, the camera can see the wall and it'll let you know that you've gotten too close. So there's all kinds of cool applications for artificial intelligence that are coming out right now and if you're young and if you're ready to take a deep dive and learn stuff you can get a head start on that skill set so you know my stem journey has you know by learning some of these skills and teaching myself camera stuff and all these kind of things has allowed me to give like commencement speeches and ted talks and lead marches and speak all over the globe and you know that actually got me to you know develop my personal brand and you know get featured on forbes and be on the front cover of Diversity Magazine. Forbes calls me like the next Bill Nye, the science guy, the next generation one. And so there's all these ways that, you know, I was able to just basically use my brain and use my scrappiness and use my desire to be resourceful and solve problems and solve problems for my community. Um, and so, you know, th this is how I got on camera and doing TV stuff now. I'm hosting TV shows. I did a show with Travel Channel. I got a big show coming out. Can't say too much about, but it's on a pretty big streaming platform that I'm sure you've heard of, uh, and that's still in development. So, you know, there's a lot of things that, you know, I'm working on now that I basically was able to work on them because I built a ver the best thing I, that I could build for free or cheap. And, you know, that was, way, that was the way that I was able to get into all these rooms and do all these really cool things. And so that's something you should definitely think about as you're pursuing STEM or STEAM or AIs, how can you get into these rooms? So, you know, I think the coolest the thing about STEM is that it's fine and dandy uh, when COVID is not around, but like, let's say you throw a global pandemic in the mix. And now, you know, what do, what do STEM people do now? And so one of the important things to think about is, look, man, STEM gives you job security in a pandemic, um, you know, in, in, in the worst times and the best times in all times. So I was able to use my tech knowledge and, you know, my understanding of how to engineer my voice to create a voiceover business during COVID. You know, this is something that I, I thought maybe I was interested in doing at one point in my life. And, you know, because of the knowledge that I took in from STEM, I was able to basically figure it out in, in a couple of months when COVID first hit. You know, um, I was able to use that animation skill that I learned, which actually involves AI as well. The, the AI actually tracks my face, and I'll show you that a little bit later. 
And I was able to build another version of my cartoon called the Live STEM Cartoon Show. So for younger kids, I would jump on as cartoon characters on Zoom and give different virtual talks about STEM to younger people. And, you know, that's something I just came up with because I'm like, man, kids are tired of seeing like talking heads on Zoom. So let me like shake it up a bit. Let me make it different. And I don't know, like modify my voice a little bit and, you know, make it a little bit more fun for the kids. So, you know, these are ways that, you know, you start thinking about the world as you get deeper into your STEM degree. You can solve any problem. There's no challenge that is not uh, surmountable. So one of the cool things that we're working on, I think is super uh, applicable for folks your age and it's absolutely free is the STEM Success Summit. And that's where we show all kinds of heroes in the STEM space that are diverse, uh, black and brown folks, folks from all different backgrounds that have succeeded in STEM. And so, you know, this is our community of folks. And I know Kalan is pretty familiar with some of us. Uh, you know, we have a good time and, you know, good vibes. And we also make STEM cool and fun and relevant. And so a couple of cool people that you might recognize from our last summit, Tatiana Ali, who is actually Ashley Banks from the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. She got to talk her talk on here. And we had Idris Sandu. So if you know the late rapper Nipsey Hussle, this is the young guy, he's 23 years old, that actually developed the Marathon store. So, you know, he actually coded Nipsey Hussle's store that uses um, artificial intelligence and um, augmented reality, AR technology, so that you could see how different clothes would fit or look if you go to the store. So super innovative dude. And, you know, he was a tech genius in his own right. Uh, and one of the cooler things that we have this year that's coming up is Dr. Kizmeki Corbett, another role model that you all should be aware of that exists. She is the Black woman that developed the vaccine for National Institute of Health uh, in, in, in collaboration with Moderna. So, you know, there's a Black woman behind the creation of one of our vaccines that's out there right now. And she's a STEM hero. And, you know, again, as you're thinking like, man, I don't know if I know anyone that's really killing it in STEM. There's a whole community of us out there and we kind of put them together in the STEM Success Summit. So I want to give you all three ways that you can start your STEAM journey today. So. The first thing I wanna to talk to you about is GitHub. And I'm not sure if you all have heard of the platform before, but it's a great tool to use where you can put out your digital portfolio. Uh, and what I, what I mean by digital portfolio is you can demonstrate like, look, I have, I can code websites and you can, or you, I can code different pages on websites. You can actually publish that code on GitHub and show people what you can do. Now, when I was in high school, I didn't think there was a way that I could really build my experience unless I got accepted into a job or, you know, I got accepted into an internship. But nowadays, you can watch a YouTube video, learn how to build a web page and start building a web page. You can watch, uh, you know, something about AI, build an artificial intelligence algorithm and publish that to GitHub. And then when someone tries to employ you or someone tries to interview you for a job or an internship, you say, look, this is my GitHub. You know, this is the work that I've done. And it makes you look a lot better than someone that's maybe aspiring to do it and hasn't put in any work at all. And you can do that from the crib or from your library or wherever you can get an internet connection. Uh, another cool thing, especially if you're 16 and older, to think about is using LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a dope networking tool. One of the, program, the programs I ran in the, in the South Bronx for kids in New York City, a lot of these kids didn't really know about LinkedIn or, or how to network and things like that. And they made their own LinkedIn pages and one of the young ladies, she was a hustler. She ended up getting an interview with an engineer at Facebook, and she's now working on getting securing an internship at Facebook because she made a LinkedIn page and, and took that effort to reach out, and she was hungry. And so if you're hungry, again, on this virtual landscape, on the digital landscape, there's all kinds of opportunities out there. Uh, LinkedIn actually named me a top voice in technology uh, a couple of years ago just because of the content I post on there. And that's another thing to think about is if you want to be a producer of things and not a consumer, right? We spend our lives scrolling down timelines all day or going on people's websites or watching TV, watching streaming platforms. But how many of us, uh, especially in communities of color, think of ourselves as the creators? And with Steam, with artificial intelligence, you can develop an algorithm that solves a problem for people, make millions of dollars. And you know, every single one of us in STEM has an opportunity to make pretty much as much money as we want uh, depending on the way that we pivot through our career and, and use the degree uh, that we want to use. So one of the biggest things I want to mention as well is soft skills. Like soft skills are so important. If you haven't heard the term, it's the ability to, you know, look someone in the eye when you're talking to them, to shake somebody's hand, to go to a networking event and be able to tell people what you do 
with confidence, to be able to get in front of people and speak and present your information in a way that is engaging and relevant and that resonates with people. And that's something that a lot of people in STEAM don't learn. They go to these really technical schools and they teach them how to code and they teach them all about artificial intelligence and how you know um, AI ethics and you know all those kind of issues. And you know you never learn how to actually get up and speak to people. But in every single one of these fields, you still have to interact with people on a regular basis, at least for right now. Maybe that's gonna change in a few years as <laughs> whole businesses are starting to be run by AI algorithms. But for right now, you definitely need soft skills. So here's again why I think STEM, STEAM and AI is dope. So it allows you to secure the bag, right? Not only was I able to get a full ride to school, there's so many of my friends that chose similar programs to mine that were able to tell the same story because they chose STEM career path. They were able to get fully funded uh, in school, but then once they got into their jobs, they made a lot of money there too. Like a lot of the average person working in tech uh, and AI, uh, they make around 80,000, 80 to 90,000 a year. Um, and, that's on, and that's on the average. So there's a lot of people that make more than that as well, but that's about more than twice as much as the average family makes uh, in the United States right now. So if you get into these careers, you 100% can secure the bag. Uh, one of the other cool things for me is that, you know, I like to empower the community. Uh, this is a cool project we did where we exposed young kids to drone technology. We let them build their own drones and, and the drones were basically, they could fly on their own and they could perform uh, functions with the drones uh, using a click of a button once they pre-programmed it, right? That's a form of artificial intelligence. They were able to dunk basketballs into hoops using drones uh, through this program. So that was really cool. Uh, and again, I like to do that kind of stuff because for me, it's bigger than just me making money for myself. I want to leave a bigger impact on my community, a bigger legacy uh, in the world. Uh, so, you know, another cool thing that, that Steam has done for me is it's taken me from what that booty do, right, on Twitter to Mr. Fascinated. For those of you all that just joined my Twitter name growing up, I was what that booty do, right? I was this ignorant kid. I was a class clown. Um, but Mr. Fascinate was able to grow out of my learning of STEM and, and taking the same, uh, you know, goofiness that I had as a young person and applying that to educating and empowering young people all over the world. So a few things I want to leave with y'all as, as I'm closing this out, and I'd love to hear any questions that you have. So one of the things I used to always hear about myself growing up, you know, you would hear this in speeches and things like that, is that I was an under-resourced kid, I was an underserved kid, or I was marginalized, I was a minority. I just remember all these different things I would hear to describe who I was. And I internalized a lot of those things, especially in high school, when I wasn't really that confident, I didn't know where I was going to go in life. And I've been through a lot in, since that time. And I think one of the most important things I've learned uh, in my journey is that I'm none of those things. Actually, the best way to describe what I am is, and what you are, and what anyone else is that goes through any kind of adversity more than, than what everyone else has to go through, is you're underestimated. Because people don't realize how much grit, how much perseverance, how hard you had to work to get to the same place that a lot of other people are. And that's a superpower. You know, today I have the hunger and the desire to move the way and shake the way I move because I had, I didn't have the same access to opportunities that a lot of other people had. And so because they had those opportunities, they're getting, you know, they're chilling now. They're not as, they're not as hungry. They don't want to do as much stuff as I want to do. So if you have that, if you have adversity of any kind, if you have obstacles of any sort, then you should think of yourself as underestimated and none of those other terms. One of the other things I think you should learn from this too, uh, you know, especially as you're in high school, I wish I, wish I knew this in high school, man, because I was so ignorant. I was what that booty do, but I had a personal brand. Kids in, in the hallway in high school, they'd be like, hey, what that booty do? They would call me by that name. And I didn't realize that, you know, at the time I actually was making a name for myself in the wrong direction. But these days, you know, as Mr. Fascinate, as the STEM dude, I have job security. Even when COVID-19 hit, unfortunately, a lot of people uh, were able, you know, they, they, they lost their jobs or didn't get the same opportunities because there are tens of thousands of people that know me as Mr. Fascinate. There's never going to be a time where I run out of work to do because everyone knows I'm a STEM guy. And you can do that for yourself, even if it's outside of STEM, even if you're a graphic designer or a photographer and you want to make a name for yourself as that. But the, the reason I say all that is because I think you should start working on your personal brand today whether that's building a GitHub, whether that's making a LinkedIn page, whether that's posting some of the cool photos and videos that you've taken 
on Instagram, right? There's all kinds of ways to do it. So one of the best, most important things I think uh, that, that's super accessible, especially for young people your age, uh, if you can find an internet connection, you can find a role model. So, uh, you know, growing up without a father in my life, I remember that I didn't have a man to really tell me about things, put me on game and, and teach me these things. And so I would Google like Will Smith interviews or Google like Dwayne The Rock Johnson interviews. And, you know, I love these guys growing up as a kid. They were like my heroes. And so I would watch how they spoke and talked and navigated through the world. And they were kind of mentoring me in that way. Uh, not talking to me directly, but obviously just watching their interviews. And so if you want to search Black person and artificial intelligence, Black woman and chemistry, uh, Black computer engineer, right? If you Google search these terms, there are literally actual people that will come up that actually do these things. And you can learn more about what it takes to be in those careers. And that's one of the most amazing things about 2021. Your role model today is a Google search away. So thank you all so much. Again, my name is Justin Schaefer. The young people, y'all know me as Mr. Fascinate, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Feel free to follow me on Instagram down here at Mr. Fascinate, uh, or check out my YouTube page, Fascinate Sci. Um, but yeah, I'd love to answer any questions. I'll stay as long as you all need me to for that. So, you know, usually I will pop in Zoom as a cartoon character. So I'll just show you all behind the scenes of how that actually works. Um, so here we are. So this is Adobe Character Animator. This is the animation software that I use. And as you can see here on the right hand side, I'll just make it a little bigger. Um, you know, there's a camera a webcam. This is my second webcam. And it's actually using dots to uh, control my face. So let me actually pull up a different character because Sci-Fly, the drone, you see his mouth moving every time I say something and speak. Um, but there's a better one. So Tubi can kind of illustrate that concept a little better. So like as I move my eyebrows up and down, like he moves his eyebrows as I turn to the left and right, he turns. And it's even his little go to in his mouth, you know, move based on the way that my mouth moves. And so that's all pre-programmed stuff that an AI algorithm is, is, is determining in real time. So there's an artificial intelligence algorithm that determines, you know, uh, basically it, 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 it figures out, okay, well, most faces on average, one eye is here, one eye is here, the mouth is here, the, the, the bridge of the nose is here, and the eyebrows are here, right? And so it, it, it's put dots on those places on my face estimating approximately where they're gonna be. Everybody's face is a little bit different. But you know, as I move those things, it tracks that and it directly applies it to the character. So I've been able to basically use this concept to build an entire cartoon show. Um, so I, you know, I figured out that I could do this and then created all these different scenes and made the characters talk to each other and all that kind of stuff. And these are all different little sciencey characters, but this is STEM, right? And this is AI and STEM. And so many people don't think of animation as like a STEM thing or even like sound engineering, right? Like Metro Boomin, I know is a really hot producer that came out of um, Morehouse, which is Spellman's, uh, uh, well, they're not technically Spellman's uh, sister school, but a school right next to Spellman. And, um, and so, you know, he's a, he's a STEM guy too. And so, you know, we, we can't start, we, we have to stop thinking of STEM and STEAM as these traditional careers, uh, just as like a person that works in a laboratory, there's so many other ways that you can express that love and, and, and definitely STEM is one of them, but um, you know, there's a lot of different ways.